just a couple of your favourite memories over the, that journey? Like, that, oh. you know? Well, it's funny, I forget about a lot of them until sometimes, it's not like I Google myself, but somebody will send me like a YouTube clip. You know, if you watch one, then it brings up all the others. Mm. Mm. So you start going down the rabbit hole or you look at pictures like that and then you click on one picture and it brings up all these other pictures. So I don't normally Google myself, but if someone sends me one, then I see something then I'm like, oh, I remember that. And then like one might pop up of me and Joe Gold from the gym and then I start remembering things like that. So it's nice, but then it's sad too because you remember all the good times and a lot of the people in the photos have passed away. But but then the main thing is too, it's like when I went back to for the induction into the hall of fame at venice beach it's like i go to golds and it's like everything just comes flashing back like it was yesterday like training there with kurt back in the day and we brought this big four-wheel drive and we took it behind golds in the alleyway and we spray painted it black with spray paint tins and it's almost like it just was yesterday like you know then walking down to the firehouse i could remember walking down with cormier and then just eating with striden but and I think, fuck, it only seems like a week ago, but then you're like, shit, that's like 20 years ago. Yeah. So it's like, it's good. It's good to look back on and stuff like that, but then it's like, like you said, time just goes so quick. Uh, I guess that's one good thing about with computers today and stuff and photos, it's all kept there, whereas, you know, I've got photo albums at home, you never look, never look at photo albums and shit. I think the photos fade after probably 20 years. You wouldn't even have a picture, so it's, they're nice to look back on and, have good memories of so so yeah it's always fun because some days i will be sitting at home watching a youtube one and then it will go to another one another one but generally photos are fun because they just keep going on and then i remember different photo shoots and what might have happened at the photo shoot and then if i look at a photo shoot i'm like oh that was taken in this studio over marina del rey and then i think oh yeah after that we went to that restaurant called jerry's deli and jerry's deli was this place that had a menu that was like massive yeah you could just get so much good fatty food there and cakes and pies and so they sort of you know one thing leads to another memory so yeah it's fun good but then it's like oh so sad <laughs> and they said because people send me videos and they go oh lee that's how i normally get them because i go, lee i love this video of you it fucking inspires me then i look at it and i go oh thanks now i'm depressed because i look at my young 20 year old self and go oh, i remember that and then you look in the mirror and go, fuck, what happened? <laughs> what would you consider your greatest achievement? And it doesn't have to be bodybuilding related. I don't know. I don't think I've got a greatest achievement. Any? <laughs> I don't think anything I've done is a great achievement. Like people say bodybuilding, winning bodybuilding titles or winning racing trophies but no my greatest achievement could have been driving down here today in the rain and not crashing yeah <laughs> i don't really i don't think i have a greatest achievement i leave things like that you know when people say well, what do you want to be known for what do you want to be remembered for i just leave that up to other people yeah my greatest achievement could be something i did i don't even know i did i could have helped somebody and yeah they might think that was a great achievement when i've done that it's like you know when it was was it last year? I was at Scratchley's having lunch and that, and I saw this person with their father having lunch, and he was like in a wheelchair and stuff. And the daughter had taken him out, and I heard him say it was his birthday and stuff. He was like in his wheelchair walker and these things. So when I went to pay for mine, I just said, "That those people over there, can you give me their bill?" So you know, I paid for their things. So little things like that. That could be. That could have made their day having their birthday lunch paid for. Because they look like, you know, you just see people look like battlers. So it looked yeah. like she saved up to take her father out for his birthday thing and that. So I like doing things like that. So I, I, I wouldn't say they're achievements, but doing things like that, I think I I get more joy from than anything that I've actually done. Yeah. Not, notary wise, where to be remembered for. Would there be anything that you would have done differently? No. I uh, think, think about that because people say, Lee, if you had to shut your mouth, you probably could have placed higher in shows or you could have done yeah. this. But then I'm like, but if I had to act a certain way to do that, then that wouldn't be me. 
So, yes, I could have played the game and did whatever yeah. and had more pro wins and I could have probably, you know, off-season, I could have probably eat stricter and probably been a bit better because off-season I just loved eating food and missed meals. I didn't. I was never strict. Yeah. If I had been more regimented off-season, I probably could have been a better bodybuilder too, but I'm like, you know what, that, then I would have been miserable. So yeah. it's like even with people, Ed Connors would say, Lee, you could make so much money guest posing you know you're that popular but i hated traveling and i hated if i wasn't in contest shape i hated going on yeah. stage so promoters would call me up all the time and say hey lee can you come and do a show i'm like yeah hold on i'll just check my calendar and i'll be like i'm busy i just didn't want to travel so i've always been like yes money's good and that money's nice to have but you know i had a nice car i had a good apartment i had food on the table bills were paid and I'm getting paid to do something I love, so I had enough money to be comfortable, whereas, you know, some people, I'd see them traveling every weekend, making more money, and so it's like you never have a nice car and that, but they're always traveling, they're never there to enjoy it and just relax, yeah. so I'd rather have a bit less and be have a better quality of life because so many people, you even see it now, they're so money-orientated, they have wonderful things, but never get to sit back and enjoy it because... Yeah. They're too busy making money and trying to make more money and shit. Cause, yeah. So I said, I've never been money orientated. Like money's nice to have. But as long as I said, as long as I have enough necessities, I'm happy. So, <laughs> What would be the biggest influence on your life? Person, um, event? Uh, probably, I'd probably say family. You know, probably family would be the influence just as far as you know my mum was always like be honest tell the truth and that and then when I was honest and told the truth I got in trouble and then I'd do interviews and talk about my life my mum would say well maybe you don't have to be that honest so. <laughs> <laughs> but then probably my grandfather just his work ethic and stuff like that because I talk about how even on the coldest rainiest days I'd be like you know get ready for a contest and I'd be just so happy to be like four o'clock in the morning I'd hear it raining I'm thinking yay no cardio today, can sleep in. And then he'd be fucking tapping on my window with a raincoat sitting on his bike saying, let's go. I'm like, oh, you old bastard. I said, if you're out there, i got to get up. So, yeah, I think just him and how he, you know, he was always, you know, he'd give his shirt off his back to anybody. I'd always tell him, like, he would go walk into the grocery store. And by the time we got home, we'd probably have half less groceries because he'd give them to people along the way on the way home, so... I think just being brought up that way. So I think they probably had the most influence on my life as far as things go. Yeah, and also he was sort of in a, like, training. Oh, he's always, yeah, he's always into fitness. Yeah, he was like, he was like crazy into it. Like, so he'd go to the gym. Like, so he'd do, like, weights. Then he'd go do, like, when they had the aerobics classes back in the day. Then he'd go back to the weights again. Then he'd go back and do... Remember the old circuit classes? Yeah. With like the light on the wall every 30 seconds. Bang! Change stations. He would do that and he'd go there morning and night. So, And then, like I said, rather than drive to the grocery store, would fucking walk. <laughs> so everything was always about walking and cardio. Yeah, so. Well, there you go. Like, that's massive. Yeah, so it just shows stupidly runs in the family. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you think like how lucky you are, like some... Um, some people grow up with no role models like that that you know they're the exact opposite that, mm-hmm. you know and I think that's really really awesome and yeah I think I said I wouldn't even say it was a role model like I said it was there well, it, well in the beginning he was always into fitness but when I got into it my grandmother and mother at the beginning were like Ugh, yuck bodybuilding you don't want to look like that yeah. so in the beginning they weren't really into it like my grandfather was into the training, but when, you know, their perception of bodybuilders was just big muscular veins and stuff. So it wasn't until after I won my first couple of shows because they didn't even come to watch my first show because they're like, oh, he's not going to do it. He's not going to go on stage. (laughs) So when I come back with the trophy, they're like, oh. So I think after I won my first couple, then they thought, oh, shit, I think he's serious about this. So then they started supporting me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was your first car? Uh, it's a Commodore. I can't remember what type of Commodore. It was only a six-cylinder, but I remember like tinning the windows and putting bigger wheels on it and I think like a spoiler on the back and stuff. And then I remember 
Remember the old like V dubs? You could get those like Porsche kits for them. Yeah. They had a V dub with a Porsche kit on it, with the big tail on the back and the flag cards and stuff. And yeah, I can't remember what I had after that. I, I was mainly just like Commodores when I was in Australia. And then when I went to America, cars were so and much cheaper. Just so um, overseas viewers know, what model Commodore was it? Oh, would have been around. VB, VC. Oh, fuck. Would have been back when I was 17, 18. So what year was that? Yeah, like 89. Bring up, um, Bring up like 80, v- VC, around 87, 88. Eighty-seven, eighty-eight, Commodore. Mate, but mine had a kid on it. Mine no, was... no, no, no. Nineteen, um, Duke, um, VC. That's it. Uh, and it was like that bluey colour, like a bluey silver colour. With that that shape. Give me a look. No, that might have been the shape up from that. Put VK. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Similar to that. Because I even had that grill put in the front like that. Yeah. And it was like this nice, it's like a bluey silver colour. It wasn't that blue, but it was like, yeah. Yeah. For, for the overseas viewers, this was a classic Australian family car that also had sports derivatives that was Yeah, look raised. at that. Even yeah. ha- I even put a spoiler on the back like that. And w- and would have just been a six-cylinder or V8? Yeah. Mate, six-cylinder, but the exhaust sounded like yeah, a V8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> the, the sports models had V8s and... Um, and just for a laugh, for the for the younger generation, put VW with Porsche kit just so oh, you yeah. can see. And mine was red and black and I had spider webs on it. It was called Black Widow. I thought it would have been the rock spider. No. See that blue one there, the blue one across? Yeah. It was like that, but red. Almost exactly like that. Had that whole kit on like that, the side skirts, the tail on the back. And that would have fooled people up in Newcastle, wouldn't it? Oh, see that red one there? Like, see it come down that one? No, there. But better than that. that. But that's like a. Did it have modified tail lights? Oh Modest. yeah, it was. Yeah, it was like. Oh. And even on the side window bits, I had these like bits that went on the back oh, there window. There we go. Now, wasn't that crazy like that? But yeah, that blue one there is probably the closest you'd get to what mine looked like. A bit similar to that. Keep scrolling, see if we can go back over to the other side. And so, go down. were you hooked on your first car? Like, did is that what? Oh, I don't know. Had a kit car similar to that. Oh Jesus! Put in um. Oh, there's one there. See that red one there? Yeah, yeah it looks similar to that. It was red and black, and uh, I had a kit car called a. Mirage is a Mirage, similar to that one there. And what was the platform, or was it just a completely? Um... I think it was based on a V Dub type body or six. No, yeah, V Dub, yeah. So they were your first three cars. You yeah, put in like Mirage, that one there. It was a V Dub. Mirage kit yeah, car. Mirage kit car. See it comes up. Yeah, like that. Oh, no joke. Yeah. And did it have a V-dub motor in it? Mm Mm-hmm. But it was quick. Oh, I thought that's when I was living up in Queensland. I thought I was fucking cool in that thing. It's almost like a... um, Put in Purvis Eureka. Purvis, P-U-R-V-I-S. Yeah, V I S Eureka. There it is. There it is. Yeah, it's like that almost. Closer to that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that was it. You know, fuck old. Go, go to the one below fancy. the gold it's like one, the, the like red the, one. It's like yeah, the red one. Yeah, yeah, just like that. And I bet it had those wheels on it, mm-hmm. or jelly beans, or mm-hmm. um, 
Look at that gold one. If I had that gold, gold orange one there, I would have been fucking cool. Ladies. And and did the um, did, is that how you got in? Did it yep. lift up like oh Jesus? Mm. And why did they stop making them? Look at that thing. And how did it go? How'd you go with the ladies with that? I got a few dates and the odd dude. Hey mate, back in the day, that looked like a fucking Ferrari. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> a young kid getting around in that. Oh, look at that. That's like fancy as. We should bring these back. Imagine just making one now and doing a few tweaks on it. Look at that one there, that orange one. Look at that. You wonder why the um, that concept that. of the, the whole thing, roof lifting up to get in, hasn't taken off. <laughs> Probably know. for good reason. <laughs> when it's pouring down, you've got to be quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was like, I was in the kit cars back then because I was almost going to get a Ferrari Dino kit car. Look up Ferrari Dino kit car. Well, I'm disappointed now that I know this. Why'd you waste your time with the Maserati and all that sort of thing? You should have just gone straight for the top shelf and got yourself a Ferrari. Uh, yeah, that, that was like a kit car, the Ferrari Dinos. Is that the real ones or the kit one? Oh, yeah. Oh, is, is there one for sale? Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, look at that. How much? Hey. Eight. Oh, we're too late. Are there any Eurekas for sale? Purvis Eurekas? Well, this this little trip down memory lanes. Um, Purvis Eureka uh, for sale. Just type in for sale. So let's see. I'm in Sydney today. I could be driving. Oh, come tree. Oh, look at that one. Scroll up. Oh, that's yeah. look at that. Show us some more pictures. Oh, come on, look at that. Is that, that's going to get attention, come on. That's been well maintained. Oh, look, oh, look inside Jeez. the wheel. If you were driving that, someone's going to think that's some fancy fucking yeah. race car. Very old, old v It looks like it's taken care of. No. What? Perva Sharika. Is it sold? Well, how, how long has the ad been? There you go. Why are you wasting your money on them Mustangs? Like, why don't you get a real classic? Like, the, oh, yeah. look at that one. Fifteen grand. Targa, Targa top. That sold a yes seven years ago. Oh. One point six liter engine. Yeah. All Good right. on fuel. No, that's awesome. And look, you, you don't see many of them. <laughs> what? No, no. They're... There was one called a Manta too. Look up, look up Manta. There was a Manta kit car. I think it was called. Yeah, they they'd be keeping all the old listings on there just to oh, get yeah. traffic. Yeah. Try a Manta. There was a Manta kit car that was. Yeah, look at that one. I Gee. almost got one of them. Click on that bottom picture, red one. Yeah, not beneath it. Look at that. I guess the good thing about... And these ones too, when I was going to get one of these, some people had put little V8s in the back of them. You know, I guess the good thing about these things is like, um, um, you know, they all probably run on V-dub parts, which are pretty mm -hmm. red, 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 readily available. And for body work, you've got no yeah, drama. one there had a V6 in, didn't it? A V8 powered Manta. Look at that one on Craigslist. As, as long as you've got fiberglass, you can. Yeah, because I know some people put V8s in these ones. That's why I was looking go. at them. Oh, wow. Imagine the weight to ratio yeah. of that, the V8 and fiberglass body. 350 pounds. <laughs> these are the things I was into when I was little, kick cars like that. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, well, that's, um, yeah. 
And if you saw that come and you'd fucking take notice, you'd think, what the hell is that? That's like a... Click on the YouTube video of one. Go back up. Or is there one up there? So, see? Look at all the stuff it had done to it. It's 250,000, yeah, maybe not. That could be a real one. Or a sale. 100, 180. <laughs> yeah, that could have been a real one. I thought there was a YouTube clip of... Well, you know, the best thing about this, it's perfect lead into my next question. Uh-huh. What is something interesting about you that not many people know? And, and I guess a, a passion for kit cars is um, <laughs> something that I've learnt. I don't really what, know. What other little secrets have you got hiding away? I don't know until I start going down memory lane to myself. I used to like model trains. I used to have a big model train set up like twice the size of this table. You yeah. know, the ones that have all the towns and tunnels and... Yeah, I'll get that. I, I, had love... a, I had a bedroom just like... And I used to love slot car sets. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And sometimes when I go to the store now and I see the slot car, so I think, oh, it'd be nice to get again and just put a big track together. Yeah. And you'd have to sit there and race them around. You just watch them go around yeah. and around. They fly off the track if you went too fast. Now, there's good ones. Um, you can look them up. You can go there and get your own car. And yeah. Oh, yeah. We're like indoor ones. Yeah, and that. yeah. yeah. They take it too serious, those yeah. cunts. I just want... <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You can just rock up there and... Yeah, put them on the track. Yeah. My friend Thomas has a big one in his garage. He has it up on the roof. He lowers it down. Yeah. He's got a big setup one there. Yeah, and he paints all the cars. Yeah. No, I love all that sort of stuff. You know what I would have liked? I I had a friend that did it, but wouldn't have the patience. He used to do those, like, boats and put them in bottles. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. no. I wouldn't have the patience, though. I wouldn't know know how to do it. Like, you have to, like... (laughs) When I was younger, because I I used to start like when I was younger, I used to like you you could get the model cars and build them and stuff, and then some of you get motors in them, and I used to like getting the planes too, where you could build the model planes and paint them, but then I just lost interest in it after a while. I could do (laughs) that. The fucking glue would stick everywhere and shit. I could do that sort of stuff. Like that's my plan for when I. Oh yeah, because you go in some of those model places, and then actually when I was living in the high desert in California, I got into those um remote control cars but the nitro powered ones you actually put fuel in them yeah i've got it yeah uh, you got yeah, them yeah i've got heaps oh they go quick don't they oh i could just um because because i don't have room for um full-size cars yeah i i would i i love playing with those because you know if you uh-huh. you pull them apart and you can't fix it you just chuck it in a box whereas if it's a car you got to, you know, root around and whatever, so... Uh-huh. Hold on one second, I got the air conditioning guy calling. <laughs> 